Chapter 1, Matter Measurement and Problem Solving. So what do you think? What do you think is the most important idea in all of human knowledge? We could have a pretty long discussion about that, huh? Oh, that's not a good sign. Okay, you gonna cooperate? I've been having issues with Doceri since they updated the computers. I think we're going to be okay. Um, so if we limit ourselves to scientific answers as opposed to social or theological or anything, it would probably be this. The properties of matter are determined by the properties of molecules and atoms. So atoms and molecules determine how matter behaves. Why is the bench top shiny and black? It's because of the properties of the atoms and molecules that compose it. Understanding these things on a molecular level gives us a lot of control over matter. We can make new materials that have specific, um, specific, 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 specific properties. Oh, it's going to be an awesome day. So atoms and molecules. We need to know what these things are, right? And we'll talk more about them later, but for now, atoms are the submicroscopic particles, meaning they're too small to see, even with a microscope. They, they are the fundamental building blocks of ordinary matter. I think of atoms as being like individual Lego bricks. You guys ever played with Legos? Seen Legos? Little tiny bricks and they stack together, right? You could build all kinds of crazy things out of Legos. Those are like the atoms. All of matter is built up of atoms. It's just how they're connected and put together. It's rare in nature to just find free atoms. They are found um, you know, in, in pure metals and things like that, but usually they are in molecules. And a molecule such as this one, a water molecule, is just composed of a specific number of a specific type of atom, and they're stuck together. So oxygen and two hydrogen atoms together make a water molecule. So when you look, if you were able to zoom in on a droplet of water and see what the individual pieces of the water look like, it would be all these little guys. Kind of looks like an upside down Mickey Mouse head. So that's a molecule. That's like three Lego bricks stuck together. Okay, so that's what we're talking about with molecules. The properties of the water molecule determine the properties of the water itself. Here is a water molecule. Here's a hydrogen peroxide molecule. They're not that different. This has two oxygen atoms, and that has one. And yet, the properties of hydrogen peroxide and of water are vastly different. You heard the joke? Uh, a scientist walks into a bar and says, I'll have a glass of H2O. The guy next to him says, I'll have H2O2. They both drink their drinks, and the second guy dies. H2O2 is water. I'm sorry, hydrogen peroxide. Gosh, I screwed that one up. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. Um, in dilute solutions, that's useful for um, cleaning out wounds. But straight hydrogen peroxide, if you drank that, it would kill you. Whereas water is necessary for life. Small difference in how the atoms are put together makes a huge difference in the properties of the molecules and the substances. So if we want to understand the substances around us, we have to understand the atoms and molecules. And that's the main point of chemistry. We're looking at the atoms and molecules. So one definition of chemistry is the science that seeks to understand the behavior of matter by studying the behavior of atoms and molecules. Here's another example of Differences at the molecular level reflected as differences at the uh, macroscopic level. So graphite. Um, graphite is what's in your pencil. It's black and soft and slippery. And graphite is composed of carbon. And the carbon atoms are bonded together in these little hexagons, but they are flat sheets. And so there's flat sheets of hex hexagons and that's why it's slippery, because these layers can slide. So it makes it a great 
a lubricant and writing implement, right? A diamond is also pure carbon. But here, the carbon atoms are bonded together in a three-dimensional way. There aren't discrete layers. And so a diamond is clear and very, very hard. Its properties are extremely different from those of graphite. Same atoms. They're just carbon atoms. But how they're connected makes a huge difference in the property of the matter. 